Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Today I'm going to be making over this cupboard. This is a um, piece that is sometimes called a linen press and might also be known as an armoire. I want it to go into my attic renovation but I think that in its current pine incarnation it's going to be a little bit understated. I want to make it a little bit grander and a little bit spookier and well give it my own personal twist. So let's get on with it. This is actually a really nice piece of furniture. Um, as you can see the doors open although they don't stay open when it's on its back like this. There are a pair of little drawers inside and of course a bigger drawer at the bottom. You've also got a lot of detail in the panelling and the um, pediments top and bottom. Pine is obviously a light wood finish and that's not really going to go in my house so I want to darken it. I'm thinking that I'm probably actually going to paint it black but I also want to add some extra details but we'll get to that in a little while. The first thing I need to do is I need to give it a bit of a sanding because I don't know if you can actually tell maybe if I turn it from the back which isn't um, so well finished to the side there is a bit of a um, finish on it that gives it a bit of a shine and I just want to um, rough that up a little bit so that um, the paint will hopefully stick better. So I'm going to go outside and do that because it's going to make a mess and I don't want to have to clean it up in here. So I'll come back and show you when it's done. I've given all of this a sand over. Now I can't find my um, finer grade sandpaper at the moment so you will actually probably be able to see some of the scratches on there and you're probably thinking oh no what's she done it's all right because I'm going to paint it um, I can get away with it I do need to get some more finer grade sandpaper but um, for today this will do um, this has given me now a bit of a key that I can paint to um, because it's shiny the paint would have been reluctant to stick so just by doing this I've just sort of helped speed up the paint process and hopefully I'll need less coats. Although doing it dark I will probably still need probably three coats to actually get the kind of finish that I want. So I sanded it, I've taken the pieces out and I've given it a wipe. Now, this is always a good thing to do if you're repainting something is to give it a wipe over with a damp cloth or some damp paper towel just to remove any dust and any surface grime and obviously with me having sanded it I really needed to do that. So now I'm ready to give it a first coat of paint. Now I, I'm going to paint this black. Black is my standard undercoat but I think this is actually going to be a black piece of furniture when it's finished. I've actually started on the drawer and as you can see the first coat even though I've sanded this is a bit less than even. It's a bit messy but I'm not worried because I know that when I come to put another coat on this it will look a hell of a lot better. It will cover better because it will have this to stick to but because I've actually allowed this to stick to the, um, to the wood with the sanding it should mean that I won't at risk having bigger um, gaps than I've got there. So I'm going to get on and paint all of this. And there's rather a lot of it because I've got to do all inside as well as outside. So yeah, I'm going to do that off camera because to be fair, I'm sure you've got better things to do with your time than watch me painting this, especially if I'm going to have to paint it three times. The first coat of paint is on and dried and as I said it's come out rather patchy. First coat always does. 
Um, there's nothing you can do about it and you just have to live with it. But I am quite liking the idea of this piece being black. So what I'm going to do now is I've had a thought of how I can dress it up a bit so it looks a bit more, a bit grander. And what I've got is I've got some metal pieces. Now these are some metal filigree pieces that are made for craft work. And what I'm thinking is I could put them onto the cupboard um, to give it a bit more depth. Paint over them with the black um, or rather maybe paint them black before I stick them on. But I'm looking at it now because obviously if I need to do something before I get my final, fa um, my final paint finish I'm thinking these. So it'll look quite um, elaborate now obviously. We'll line those up a bit better but um, I'm thinking of something like this. So I am debating whether to um, stick them on now and paint over them and risk getting paint in the gaps. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to paint these separately and put them onto it once it's painted. But I don't know what you think, but I think this is going to make the piece look um, a lot more elaborate when it's all done. The painting is done. Now I've put three coats on most of this and I've got a couple of paces that you may or may not be able to see like on the edge where I need to touch it up a little tiny bit. But um, let me just shut these two a bit on there as well. I've painted the bits, the metal bits, in, in black. They've had um, two coats of black. This has had three coats. Now, when I put this on, it's okay, but I'm actually thinking I need a little bit more. And I think I'm going to be giving this a bit of a dry brush with some silver paint. Um, just the slightest amount so that it actually um, stands out a little bit more. And then I'll put a little bit of silver, again dry brushed, onto the um, andals. This has actually taken a lot longer to paint than I anticipated. Um, being such a complicated piece and painting it inside and out, it has taken a long time, mostly because of the drying times. The temperatures have dropped in the past few days and as a result, it's taken longer to dry. And obviously, you can't just paint it all in one go. You have to do bits and wait for it to dry and do bits and wait for it to dry. And it's been a bit annoying. So I'm going to give these a bit of a dry brushing. Now I've got my palette here and I've got my little tiny brush. I've got all my brushes in the way actually. And I've got my metallic silver paint. And I'm just going to put a bit of this into there. And that is far too much. And I am going to take most of it off with my paper towel. I just want enough so that when I go over my corner piece, which I've actually realised looks almost like a filigree bat, and now I've realised that I cannot see anything else but this, but they won't fit on the panels that way round. So I have got to find something else that I can put my little um, bat things on. And if you see, all I'm doing is just rubbing a little bit of paint over. And um, yeah, that's then going to just highlight it a little bit. I have also um, had a look at protecting it because obviously these bits of paint on the edge have come off when I've opened it. So I think I'm going to use some matte Mod Podge, which will give it a slight um, sort of a satin sheen to it rather than a really shiny gloss. Um, and that's going to be another thing that I'm going to have to do. So I'm going to um, get on with putting the silver on these 
and then I think I'm going to stick them in place. With the um, dry brushing done, I'm starting to stick these in place. Now what I've done is I've put some of my glue on the back and I'm just going to put that into position where I want it. And that looks like that's about right, I think. Um, all I'm doing is I've got a cocktail stick, a toothpick, and some of my acrylic glue, which will actually stick these in place. Um, and I'm just dabbing it around onto the back. Obviously putting more where there's a solid piece and then just around the edges where it's um, a bit more detailed. And then it's a case of just putting them into place like so. Um, the bigger pieces are a bit more complicated because as you can see, I'll show you the back, there's not so much um, of the big stuff so you have to go around it with the point of the toothpick which is what I've done on the drawer but I think it looks pretty good and if I put that drawer back into place now you can see it just adds that little bit of extra detail to the piece. I am really pleased with how much more sort of gothic this is actually looking just by adding these pieces on. Now as I think I said I'm going to um, give it a coat of matte Mod Podge. Um, I just need to protect this paint being matte as it is it is kind of a little bit um, at risk on the um, edges and that sort of thing so I'm just going to do that but I'm really pleased with how this is going so I'm going to go and I'm going to start Mod Podging it which is again going to be a fairly time consuming process so I will probably come back to you tomorrow. After I'd put the um, matte Mod Podge on I found that some of the silver wasn't showing through very much so I have actually been back and um, put a little bit more of the silver dry brushing over the metal pieces just to pick them out because I do want them to show and since they're going to be in an attic I'm not expecting it to be the most um, tidy of rooms and I'm expecting there to be stuff sort of draped and in far piled in front of it and that kind of thing. So um, I do want I did want to do something so they'd show up and I think it looks quite good now. I've even put some Mod Podge inside and that still isn't dr completely dry which is why if you can see white bits that's what it is and it's also why the doors are not shut properly at the moment because um, I don't want to get them stuck. Um, in places the finish is a little bit rougher than I would have liked. I may go back and put a bit more of the Mod Podge over it just to try and smooth it out but I might just leave it. Um, again as I said it's a piece that's going to be in the attic, it's going to have been up there for a good number of years and um, yeah you don't normally put your best furniture in the attic, you put the things that you don't really want to get rid of but also don't really want around anymore. So here it is with the Mod Podge. Um, perhaps you can see in the light that there's a little bit of a sheen. It's just enough that it looks finished. Um, I could have used the glossy if I'd wanted a shinier finish but I'm quite happy with this. Now that the renovation is um, all but complete I'm already thinking about how I'm going to address this. Now my attic is going to have the air of a place that has been forgotten by the older members of the household and as such is a bit of a repository of all kinds of weird and wonderful things but that has been rediscovered by the younger generation who 
are intent on going through everything, uh, opening drawers, opening boxes, pulling things out and um, just generally exploring. And so I'm going to have this positioned so that it's open to some degree, maybe one door open, one door closed, I'm not sure yet. Maybe with things coming out of some of the drawers because that always makes things look like somebody's been rummaging. And um, I'm obviously looking at what I could be putting inside. Now, I don't really want to go down the conventional spooky route. I don't want to rely too heavily on skulls and pumpkins because, well, it's a bit cliched. And whilst I've got skulls in my house, I will have skulls in my house, I will have pumpkins in my house, especially with Halloween decorations, I want there to be some more subtle nods to the horror genre, something that reflects my own sort of personal, slightly spooky aesthetic. And so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and come up with some things that I can make to go in here and in the rest of the attic that suggest horror movies. For instance, if I wanted to suggest the film It, I could go with a red balloon or, more subtly, a yellow rain hat. But I'm looking for ideas for things that could represent other horror films without shouting, this is a horror film. So if you've got any ideas of things that I might like to include, please feel free to comment below and also over on the Gothic Unicorn Facebook page. I'm always interested to hear what people think and um, any inspiration will be welcome at the moment because I know I want to do this but I'm not sure how. I hope that you've enjoyed this little um, makeover video, um, just showing you how you can take something that is quite ordinary and mass produced and make it your own. Obviously you could make this look like some kind of piece of um, quite grand furniture in a similar way just by changing the, um, the finish from black to you know white or cream. It could look like one of those grand sort of French pieces but it just shows you that nothing is sacred when it comes to the doll's house. If you have enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, bye.